Several years ago, one evening, we got together, my family and I, we sat down to watch Beauty and the Beast, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, boom, I got hit. No, no, not by my wife. <laughs> by what I call a daddy moment. I had to teach my kids a lesson. So I did the unthinkable. Right there, in the middle of the movie, in the middle of the scene, I reached over and I picked up my VCR, remote control device. And I pressed rewind. You know, I replayed the scene and I forced my kids to listen to those words once more. And I must tell you that what we heard that night took us by surprise. We don't like what we don't understand. In fact, it scares us. This monster, he's mysterious at least. So bring your guns, bring your knives, save your children, save your wives. We'll save our village and our lives. We'll kill the beast. And suddenly, my daddy moment got dead serious. And here's why. As I sat with my kids watching a child's cartoon, it suddenly hit me that young people your age all across North America bring their guns, knives, clubs to school every day. Now, clearly, I do not mean physical weapons. No, don't get me wrong. Hear me carefully. Hear me carefully. When I say guns in brackets, I really mean words. When I say knives, I mean attitudes. When I say clubs, I'm talking about the ways that many of us have deliberately chosen to treat people in our own classrooms whom we don't like, whom we don't get, whom we don't understand because in some way they're not quite like us. See, in some way they are different, just like the beast. But see, in school, different isn't always seen. In school, different is often felt a lot more deeply. Trust me, I know. First day of school, second grade, a new boy walks in. His body is different. His body is larger. And the first day of school in second grade, the class, Gaston says, Hey man, check it out. It's a fat kid. <laughs> Begin to laugh at him. Don't even know his name yet. Don't lie. Have you ever seen that before? Many of us. And we have no idea what he lives with. Well, see, he could be Bill. I met Bill in a 900 student 6-8 middle school in central Pennsylvania several months ago. At the end of my program, Bill talked to me in the hallway and said, Mr. Brown, I'm the beast. I'm the fat kid they all laugh at. They have no clue what I live with. I said, tell me. Mr. Brown, he said, I came here in sixth grade with a B-plus academic average doing really well until one day my doctor told my mom and me, I have a serious medical problem. So now I must take prescription medicine every day for the rest of my life to stay alive. Problem is, my medication has one single side effect. No matter how hard I try, no matter what I do, I am no longer able to control my weight. But, he said, the kids don't care. They tease, they pick, they laugh, they push, they trip, they make fun. And after a while, I became known to the entire middle school as the dumb, stupid, fat kid. It hurt so much, I couldn't think, I couldn't concentrate. I began to fail my classes, Mr. Brown. And you know what? I wanted to quit school for the rest of my life in seventh grade. I barely got to eighth grade and I hate it here. And as Bill poured out his heart, I saw it. He was pulling his sweatshirt down as he spoke, trying his best to cover his body, and the young man had no idea he was doing this. The action had become completely subconscious because for two years he'd been told by young people like you in a school like this how dumb, how fat, how stupid, and how beastly he was. He had begun to believe it. See, I learned that day that Bill refused to eat lunch in the cafeteria. He'd never do it. No. Every single day he would take his lunch and physically go and hide in the principal's office because that was the only place he felt safe. In a village where young people just like you laughed at, mocked, ridiculed, picked on and teased the dumb, stupid, fat kid to the point of breaking his heart. And they didn't care either because they 
like millions of people your age. I mean, honestly, maybe some of you had bought what I call the big lie. And that goes something like this. Hey, come on, I, I was kidding. I was joking, I was playing around. He's my friend, they know I don't mean it. Besides, everybody calls her that name. Come on, what's the big deal? Don't lie to me, kids. Have you ever heard anything like that in this building? Wow, almost everybody. What's the big deal? I'm gonna tell you, it's two things. Number one, you don't know what goes on behind a plastic smile. And number two, please trust me students, you have no idea sitting in this room right now who among you is really wearing one. But you may not care. Because for you, your school is the most kind and loving place on the planet and you know for a fact that absolutely nobody in your school ever gets hurt by other people's words, attitudes, or actions, right? Oh, I'm wrong? Whoa. If I'm wrong, students, then there are two serious thoughts we must consider today. Number one, if I'm wrong, it means that there are people here today who deep down, they know exactly how I felt 40 years ago. And number two, it also means that there are individuals in this room who are responsible for that. But for a moment, I need to be serious and you need to answer for yourselves today what just might be your most crucial questions. So here we go. I'm serious. Think about this. How are some of the people seated here today really going to feel deep inside 40 years from now when they hear your name again? I'm serious. When they open their electronic yearbook in the year 2052, when they open their electronic yearbook 40 years from now and they see your face on the screen in their heart, what will they really remember? about being here with you and how you and your friends, you and your buddies, you and your boys used to treat them. However, I promised to be honest. So I must tell you this, that not every youngster your age has great friends in school. The truth is, tens of thousands come to school daily and they wear what I call a plastic smile. They smile outside and they cry on the inside. See, some young people wear plastic smiles for years. You know why? We don't meet the beast in the middle or high school grades. No. We make the beast. Kindergarten. You don't believe me? I'll prove it. I need everyone's help, every adult, every student, on a show of hands. Can you recall ever being in kindergarten or first grade and ever hearing a line like this in school? Ew, don't play with her, she got coogies. Our uh, hands all over, well, yeah, and guess what? We had, we had no idea what coogies were, but she had them. <laughs> and we knew that because one child said, don't play with her. And a funny thing happened. Before we even noticed it, the child who pointed that finger became our Gaston. Sticks and stones can break my bones. Unkind words can break my heart. There is no surgery for a broken heart. You might say, come on, Mr. Brown, give me a break. I was five years old, I didn't mean to hurt nobody. And that's true, I mean, when you're five, nobody goes to school and says, uh-huh, it's now time for me to bully and harass that child over there. <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous. However, before you know it, you begin to follow Gaston, who says, don't talk to her, don't play with him. Why? They don't look like you, or sound like you, talk like you, walk like you, dress like you, act like you. They aren't cool like you. They can't play ball like you. Their body is different. They have a speech impediment, a physical handicap, a learning difficulty. And Gaston says, they're dumb, he's stupid, she ugly, they're weird, retard, what a freak. And we laugh in their face and fail to understand. Please hear my heart, kids. In the minds of many, this is a short distance away from this. It starts 
in kindergarten. He's got cooties. And before long, anybody who's different becomes your target, your victim, your beast. You start to grow up. Over the past 15 years, I've learned that kids your age are very skillful at hiding their pain. There may be somebody in this room right now who you love to laugh at, to pick on, to tease, to make fun of. And you don't know behind their plastic smile, he or she may go home at night to an older brother or sister or maybe an adult in their own home who says, you're stupid, you're dumb, you're a moron, you're a loser, you can't do anything right, I can't believe you're my kid. And that person you laugh at, it's a broken heart every night. And they come here with you every day. Seven hours a day, five days a week, 180 days a year for three years. And all they need from one or two of you is your gift of kindness, your hand of friendship, your respect, your acceptance. But you don't do it. You bought the lie. Think about that. And maybe today in this room behind a plastic smile, someone here, male or female, deep down has felt like giving up. But I believe we can change that. Here's how. I want to ask you all to take a stand for what you know is right. For respect, responsibility, for family, for treating others with honor and character. I have some simple ideas for you. Number one, let's get to know one person who's different. You stood, you know who they are. Go over and talk to someone you normally talk about. Find their gift. You might change their life. If you've hurt someone, apologize today. Do not wait. And guys, if your buddies want to go beat some dude down, call some guy gay or mess some kid up, you be a man of character, courage, and say, not cool, dot here. Girls, if your BFF want to start some female drama, some girly rumor, or make some poor classmate feel like trash, you display kindness and compassion and say, not in my house. Where do we start? Right here, right now, with you. It is your school, your village, your life. All I can do is ask you and trust you. I ask you all, take a stand, make a difference. So take care of yourselves, take care of each other, make this day, make every day an outstanding day, and may you always live with peace and love.